What's up everyone, Matthew Encina here, and in this video, I'm gonna review the work of Morris Caligari. He's one of my students from the Style Frames course where I teach you guys how to create dynamic frames in Photoshop that tell amazing stories. So this is part of a project that he's working on. It's called Port, is based around a researcher in the distant future after her planet's resources have become scarce. To combat extinction, this researcher has been assigned to examine a new planet and test if any areas are habitable. Quick travel portals have been set between bases throughout 50% of this planet by previously failed excursions. Unfortunately, for the researchers who agree to take this mission, the portal home will not activate due to unforeseeable risks unless a usable soil and water sample is found. So that sounds pretty cool. Port is this IP that Morris is working on. He posted this in the Slack channel. I loved it so much that I wanted to give it my critique uh, because there were little things that I wanted to adjust with the frames that he made. I have his frames opened up here in Bridge. And I gotta say, these frames are beautiful. Let's start with his hero image here. I think this is pretty awesome. I like uh, how simple this is. You have this nice silhouette of our character here. Um, she's kind of outlined or rim lit with some of the glowing elements on her suit and this rim light that's on top of her head. And Morris is playing at my heartstrings right now using uh, Futura here. That's one of my favorite fonts of all time. And we use that on the main future channel quite a bit. Uh, this is a great hero frame that could be used as like the key image when he's promoting this project. Next, this is a wide shot that he had painted. Uh, it looks like this is all photo comp together. And I'm assuming this is this inhabit uninhabitable planet, or at least the planet that our character has traveled to. So he's giving me a big wide shot. There's water here. They need to see if the, the dirt is is viable in terms of growing life here. So this is a pretty rad shot. I mean, there are little details here in the water here. It looks, it's like a, just a little bit sloppy, but you know, f to be honest, for a lot of these concept frames, as long as there's enough information there and it sells the idea, you don't need much more. So little things like that, yes, it would be nice if it was cleaned up, but it's not 100% necessary. So this is a cool wide shot. You get a sense of, that this little character here on the left bottom that she's all alone because she's tiny in this very very big world so this is a nice way to represent that in this big frame next we're close up on our character and just like morris had told us she is checking the viability of the soil here so she's exploring here on the planet and this is a close-up shot of her looking at the dirt sample so I think the uh, framing is all right here. I think it might have been more interesting if we were actually a little bit more in front of her where we uh, the hand was in the foreground much bigger and uh, we are looking at the reflection of the sample in her helmet here, in the visor here. So while I think this frame is, is pretty cool, I think it could have been a, a bit more dynamic with the hand much bigger in the foreground and the character's head uh, behind it. Uh, so a little tweak there. Um, and I think this frame would be killer. Next, we have this medium shot. It looks like this is a vehicle that the character rides around the planet on. I love this shot. It's a cool up shot where it's very heroic because we're looking up at the character. So our camera angle is low around her knee, looking up. And we get a sense that she is the hero in this uh, environment. What I like about this is the sense of depth. You get this nice foreground element and a couple of layers of mountains going back. I think there are some little tweaks with the contrast. If I squint my eyes, I feel like the contrast needs a little bit of work. I feel like this character can pop out a little bit more with darker values and the background can protrude back a, a bit more with lighter values. So I will be tweaking that. And I think that's it. So these are Morris's frames, I think they're quite beautiful. I think he's done an amazing job, but I'd like to get in and tweak some of his frames uh, based off of my personal preference. So I'm gonna start with this frame here, which I've done a little bit of work on already. So this is where Morris was. And after I had done my tweaks, this is it after. So what you'll see in this frame is I increased the contrast overall. I played with the values and I adjusted the layering of the elements. So I'll, I'll break this down one at a time. So you can kind of see what I did here. So I'll turn all of these off. 
So first I was looking at the background and I was trying to push. That's my dog, Chewy. He's barking. All right. So first I started with the background and I wanted to push some of the elements back. So if I'm looking at some of the background stuff I did, I added a few more layers of clouds just to get a little bit more value change. So I just added this as a soft light in the background. Then I added a little bit of a haze. This is just another soft light that I painted so it lightens the values in the background. Then more detail, I used the warm sky because I looked at what Morris had done and I felt like everything was just all blue. And I wanted to have a little bit more contrast between the, the hues. So I wanted to use a complementary color to all of the blues that he was using here. So I added a little bit of warm detail here with the sunlight uh, passing over our character and in the background so you could see what that looks like here. It's very subtle. As you see, these will all add up. Then I started adding more background haze, trying to push that background even further back. And you can see now the background now is this uh, extreme background here and then the mid ground here with this mountain. Now there's a lot more separation with the two. Then I wanted to enhance this warm light, so I just painted a very soft, uh, warm sunlight here. And then I wanted to start increasing the foreground contrast. I'm going to turn these three layers on, and you're going to see. I just added these mostly as a soft light. Oh, Actually, these are just curves. I just was messing with the curves, and I masked out the areas. You could see the... Uh, the layer masks right here and I just adjusted the value so that the f I'm only messing with the foreground adding a little bit of warmth adding more contrast and then darkening this spot here because it was a little distracting for my eye next I started adding um, some effects so you'll see this in my folder here and essentially I wanted to add this cool low-lying fog just to give this shot a little bit more atmosphere so I I found this cool image, the stock image of some fog. Let me show you guys there. Let me isolate that. All right, let me open that up so you guys can see what that looks like. So I found this cool image on a stock site. Very cool. So I painted some of that in here, um, having it come out of the exhaust of the side of this vehicle and then let it sit on the floor here. And I color corrected it a little bit to be more blue just to match the environment around, which you can see here, just a little bit of color correction. And then overall, I started doing a couple of things. I added a vignette to this where I'm just closing off and darkening the edges here just so that the highest point of contrast is on our character's face right here. So I'm closing up some of the details on here so that we could look at this character. Next, I did a high pass. It's going to be hard to see this, but you could see it in the details here of the vehicle. Let me just isolate this high pass. Basically, what a high pass does, if you go to filter, go to other and go to high pass what it will do is it will look for all of the edges and enhance them in Lightroom this is called clarity so that's kind of what it's uh, what it's uh, emulating but it's taking all the edges and enhancing them so if we, I go really close you can see what I'm talking about here so this is with it off and with it on you can see how it's sharpening the details on the globe so it's just taking all the edges and I'm using this as an overlay to uh, pump up all of the edges then lastly, I did uh, some curves just to do a final balance because I wanted things not to go to pure white and to pure black. I like the, that things are a little bit uh, on the softer side. So you can see I lifted the blacks here in the curves and lowered the lights here. And then I use a selective color to just tint the blacks. So I isolated the blacks and you see I've adjusted the magenta and the yellow and the black here just to give it a little bit more of a cool style. So if we look at the overall finish of this, this was all of my work that I've done to it on top of what Morris had. So Morris had a great, fantastic base. What I did is I just jumped in there, played a little bit with some of the color tones and the contrast to make this frame pop. Let me know in the comments if you like this one better or if you liked Morris's uh, better before I messed with it. Next, let's go to his hero frame i really like this thing right this is the uh, hero frame that is being used to showcase the, as the key image for this ip this uh, project and i did some fun stuff with this so this one i do have a speed design let me show you what i ended up with so this one i added uh dual colors you know i, I see this a lot in sci-fi movies where they have a uh a blue light and a red light and I just wanted to play with the tones just to get a little bit more diversity of color in the frame then I added all these light leaks and a little bit of uh, lens flares in there 
and then I was playing with the kerning and positioning of the letters P-O-R-T for port. So let's get into the speed design so you can see from beginning to end what that looked like. All right, so first I started by raising the values up and punching the contrast. Then I started exploring making this frame a duotone where we have a blue color on the left side. And then I was exploring some magenta or some orange or some purple on the right side just to make it a little bit more interesting. You can see I was swinging the hues a bit trying to see what works best. A lot of it looked muddy. So I started exploring and went onto a stock site and started bringing in some lens elements, some colorful light leaks. And I started bringing them on top of the frame and I started playing to see if I could bring in these light elements to see if it might break up the frame in an interesting way and give us some interesting lens artifacts. So I have this red one that I put in the top right and I got these anamorphic lenses that I had bleed in on the left and the right side of the frame. Then I started playing with the typography a little bit. I kind of bounced around just trying to rebalance different parts of the frame. So I kerned out port, I spread it out, made it bigger. And then I started playing with the values again and then I started playing with the overall contrast and I looked at it, it was starting to feel a little bit muddy. So I had to go back in and, you know, I started exploring with other elements. I wanted small particulates uh, in the frame just to make it feel a little bit more realistic, a little bit more interesting. So I was playing with these small uh, fire particulates that I found on the internet and I started dropping them in on the right side of the frame just to see if they could creep in. Then I revisited the typography again. My, my wife said the type was too big, so I made it smaller, kerned it out. Then I added more uh, lens elements, as you can see here. I'm just subtly painting them in, and I ended up using maybe about five, six, or seven different layers of these lens elements, and I was just using them all a little subtly and layering them on top of each other just to make it feel a little bit more dynamic. As you can see, as I'm starting to get to the end, um, the frame started to look a lot more interesting because I had a better dynamic range of color. Things started getting darker as they reached the edges. And I have all these interesting light leaks and lens flares coming in. So let me know what you think if you liked Morris's frame better before or after I started messing with it. All right, so I wanted to answer this question that Morris had. He asks, the story is pretty involved, so what I have only establishes the look for the most part. If I were to pitch this as a short film, music video, or whatever, how should I focus my future style frame efforts? So when you're pitching your ideas, I think you want to do a couple of things. First, when you're making a couple of these frames, focus on the big steps. If this was a two hour movie, show me what every 20 minute block is going to look like. Start with the drama, drop me right into the conflict. What's the challenge here? Because that will get me excited right away. Uh, with these frames, because it takes a lot of time to render and produce, uh, obviously you want to get the most bang for your buck. So show me the biggest moments because that will help me piece together what the five steps are in the story arc. Other tools you could use, you could use mood boards, which are just a bunch of references that you pull from different sources to help fill the gaps of maybe different parts of your story or if you're painting the idea of what your world looks like, you could use mood boards. Uh, you could also use something called a sizzle reel, which is basically taking a bunch of references that already exist, cutting them together. It's kind of like a moving mood board and it gives you a feeling, a moving feeling of what the final piece might be about. So that's another tool you could use to pitch your idea. So hopefully those tips were helpful for you, Morris. Hopefully that answered your question. If you guys have more questions about how to pitch your ideas or how to make frames, let me know in the comments section below. If you want to learn more about the art of creating beautiful style frames, consider taking my course where I teach you my process of designing dynamic images that tell powerful stories. I'll leave a link in the description below. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment because it really helps us out. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you never miss another episode like this. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks for joining us. With that out of the way, it's time to get back to work. See you guys.